Hello and welcome back. So um, in the previous video we spoke about the finally keyword. Um, also just uh, before I proceed, please subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos and give it a thumbs up as well, thanks. <laughs> so now we'll just continue. So in the previous video we spoke about um, using finally and uh, I have put in my... Um, oh, here I have my um lovely using exceptions class that we spoke about and we saw that the try has here a throw exception method that's called and then we uh, go down to the throw exception here so it's important now if you remember the data structures so i'm going to bring over my plates and we're going to talk about data structures again <laughs> so if you remember it was last in first out so we have our method call stack which is here, which is our stack. And then we um, we uh, push on and we pop off. So that's important because when we have um, each of the methods that are called and they have local variables within them, we said previously that they go away, but actually the way we phrase it is that they go out of scope. Um, so they're gone from memory is freed up. So it's then returned with the method return address and stuff like that that happens in the background. But for now, we're talking about the try and catch. So with the try and catch, then um, exceptions are rethrown um, when a catch block then decides whether or not it can process it or not. So we have our, our try um, here and our catch, and then you can have multiple catches associated with try. And then for each one of these that it goes through, it decides whether it can run it or not. And then it goes back, the pro but the flow of control goes back um, to the outer try. So that's also um, with here we have our throw. So if it doesn't um, get processed here, then it has it also throws the exception to the next and it goes out to our try. But here with finally, we do not use the throw keyword. So exceptions cannot be rethrown re from a finally block um as the exception perimeter then it like the local variable from the catch block no longer exists so it's out of scope similar to the method call stack and that's important to remember <laughs> for the data structures um so then we have our uh does not throw exception which we didn't call in the previous example that i went through but now we are going to call it and we are going to put it underneath here and we are going to play and you should see the oh yes i have my here <laughs> i have the console here so if i just make this a little bigger um you can see then our method throw exception our exception handled by method finally executed in throw exception so here we have our finally executed in throw exception and exception handled in main so we have here that executes afterwards so we have our handles in uh, method is here first so it catches it then um, it's finally thrown with uh, throw exception <laughs> um, finally is executed because it's executed regardless and then it goes back to main and then this is executed um, because within this try it obviously calls then multiple other try and catch statements and then here we have does not throw exception and we have our method does not throw and then finally um, executes in does not throw um, an end of end of method does not throw is also there so it skips <laughs> so that is our using exceptions from the previous now we're going to go on to this one so i did out another example and we're talking about stack unwinding in this example so we have our try here again with our entry point main always remember string is a reference type so it's a capital s we have our try here and it calls method one now naming conventions are important but this is just for uh, demonstration purposes so you can see the the flow of control with this program so we have method one here 
And if I go down to method one, oh, method one calls method two, and then it also throws exception. Exception um, is uh, always going to inherit from throwable. So that's also important to <laughs> remember because when we have the exception um, here, it's using a throwable object. So here we have method two, throws exception, calls method three, and then method three, finally, um, throw new exception, exception thrown in method three. So I will show you, there is also an important um, part within this catch. So we have our, our streams. So we said in the um, previous video, we said our, we have our standard output stream, which is our system dot out. Um, which is our stream, which is our sequence of bytes. And then we have our system error, which is our error output stream as well. Um, and both of them uh, function similarly in terms of printing it out, but this prints it out to the, we're printing it out in our case to the console. So we can see different messages within this. Uh, we also spoke a little bit about, I could write this as a full word exception, but usually within a workplace, they use the placeholder E, so I'm going to stick with that because it's more accurate to real life. And we have E print stack trace, which is a method that is part of um, throwable, so it's it's useful in this case. Then we create an array, <laughs> which is our stack trace element. Um, so it's throwable dot get stack trace is returning it um, and then we have what's called trace elements and uh, we get the stack trace here so we just print out then our uh, first line and then we use a tab which we haven't used really previously so it's our backslash t for our placeholder and then we have our enhanced for statement again. So if you're unfamiliar with that, please go to the video. I'll link it below. It's one of the important ones. We're not using a counter controlled loop for this. It's just iterating through it. Um, and here we have just our get class name for our element and uh, for our trace elements and our get file name also get line number and get method number. <laughs> and this becomes extremely useful when you're in the workplace because if you have anything um, on, a cons on a customer device, let's say, you can send all of this information to a file on the device and then um, use that file, like I said in the previous video, use that file then to figure out an error and then the developers can fix it. So. <laughs> Um, so using the exceptions is, is really important. So we have here um, static methods that are method one, method two, and method three. And you will see that when I play this, <laughs> you will see that um, we have exception thrown in method three. So java.lang exception, exception thrown in method three. And we have our method three, two, and one, and dot main. So you can see um, part of where it is. Oh, I pressed that and sorry. <laughs> um, that was meant to come up here. <laughs> so line 37, so you can see here the line and you can trace where it's coming from. And then here we have 33, hopefully that doesn't jump. Yeah, that's fine. Um, method three, so it goes, um, it's called stack unwinding. So we have the same as what I just said there, we have our, our plates, and then we need to remember that each of those, um, each time that a catch is, is caught, there's no catching of the exception here, so it goes to the next. Um, and then it uses, it calls each of the methods then to go through it. So three, two, and then goes <laughs> to where it's going to get caught. So, <laughs> Um, to the stack trace then. So we have here using exceptions is the class name. The file is called using exceptions. It's one of the um, one of the pro problems that a lot of people do when they're starting out programming in Java is that they don't call the file and the class the same name, which it doesn't necessarily have to be um, the case, but with uh, hello world, certainly you have to have them both the same so they run. <laughs> um, so we have line 
Uh, but we'll get to the details of it doesn't necessarily have to be later on because you can have multiple classes within <laughs> within a file um, as the program scrolls. So we have line 37, line 33, and then um, 29 and 6. So you can see the stack unwinding. So we also have what's called a throw point. So here we have our... Um, throw new exception on line 37 because the throw statement is not enclosed in a try in a try block then stock stack unwinding occurs um so method three then terminates at um here so then it goes the pros the, it returns the control to um method two and then wherever it was invoked from and because no try block encloses that then the stack unwinding occurs again and again and then also it's important to note that we, um, we only briefly spoke about this and I'm hoping to get into it um, more as we do more videos but for unchecked um, exceptions then we have the application won't compile or will compile but it'll give um, incorrect results um, so with the rethrowing of exceptions, exceptions are rethrown when a catch block upon receiving an, an exception decides whether it can handle it or whether um, it can only partially process it. So we also um, need to remember when an exception is thrown but not caught. Um, so there's no catch. Um, the method called stack then is, is known as on it's unwound so we have our stack of plates and then it like basically goes um unwinds it um so it makes an attempt to um uh to catch the exception in the next outer try um and then when the this is basically called the 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 I have a stack unwinding, sorry. <laughs> so unwinding the method called stack means then that the method in which the exception was not caught terminates. So then all of the local variables in the method go out of scope, which we know, now know as the goes away, <laughs> which I explained in the data structures video. <laughs> so um, all exceptions derive from the class throwable because it's a throwable object. Um, so which has the print stack trace so the print stack trace is is already part of the java.bang so we don't need to import any classes it's already there for us to use <laughs> so we have here an example so if i go here it says java.lang exception but when i hover over this it will show us um, a different example the format of this information depends on the implementation of it um, usually it has our error output stream so we know that streams are a sequence of bytes we have our two streams at the moment system.out and system.err and we have um with it with the get stack trace that's going to be our information for our method call stack we have our get message which is going to return um more of a detailed information about it but we also have um uh, we can get the class we can get the file and we get the line and we can get what methods as well so it's really useful now occasionally you want to ignore an exception by writing a catch handler <laughs> with an empty body <laughs> before doing so though ensure that the exception doesn't indicate a condition that the code higher up might need so that's also uh, important to remember and then each stack um, trace element which we have here is an array and um, each of those then represents one call um, one method call and then method call stack so everything of all of this is then of course um the same as before so it's our uh the program's output shows that the print stack trace follows the same pattern as normal so it's our class name dot method which we know is um going to access it so our file name line number um those things so where class name method name and file name indicates the name of the classes so here we have our stack trace element and then each of these are class names and 
uh, oh, oh, uh, indicates the name of the regressive method and um, the line number indicates the file uh, where the file, the exception um, occurs. So that's it for today. Hope you liked the video. I'm going to do um, keep with the exceptions and things like that for the next video as well. I'll go into a little bit more detail. It's really important in a work um, environment to be able to do these things because you want to be able to send out whatever product that you're using and get back information from customers using it because usually when you have um, a product or a device that you're, you've made um, when you've done all the testing and maybe you use things like JUnit to automate some testing and stuff like that, it's never as good as the maybe thousands of customers that you're going to have that use it in a different way to what you expect <laughs> and then by getting that information you'll be able to figure out what the problem is and hone in on exactly what part of the code you need to fix um so thanks for watching and please subscribe to my channel if you want me to make more i'm gonna keep making them for another while and um, hopefully there's more subscribers then and uh yeah we'll see as we go along okay Thanks a million. Bye.